A new state law cracks down on e-cigarettes in school, but did state lawmakers go too far? Well, the new law was met with some praise and some pushback, and some parents tell 13 Investigates the punishment doesn't fit the crime or fix the problem. ABC 13's Jonathan Bruce takes a closer look at the impact of the bill. Even a first time offender, a little kid, I mean, as young as my fourth grader, uh, could seriously be ripped out of their school community and placed in the same situation as a, as a student who has committed a felony. That's absurd. More than 2.1 million students across the country reported using e-cigarettes in 2023, according to a survey study from the FDA. The study showed a rise in use among middle school students. We asked every school district in Texas, ABC 13 has reported e-cigarette use among elementary school students. Kids as young as 10 vaping at school. It's a pernicious problem. The first and foremost harm of e-cigarettes is the addiction process. Kids smoke them, they get addicted, and that addiction stays for life. But did the Texas legislature go too far in trying to curb the trend? House Bill 114 went into effect this school year. It requires a mandatory placement in alternative school, or DAEP, for any student caught in possession of an e-cigarette. We wanted to have the ability to put some teeth, if you will, into the fact that, uh, you know, this was this is a serious situation. The bill, sponsored by Brazoria County Republican State Representative Ed Thompson, adds possession of an e-cigarette to Section 37 of the Texas Education Code. That section details some of the most serious defenses a student can commit and requires removal from school. The offenses include bringing a gun to school, terror threats, violent assault, and now possession of an e-cigarette. There's a lot of contention there about a lot of different things, but not about this. HISD this Parent and District Advisory Committee Co-Chair Celeste Milligan says the punishment doesn't fit the crime. Doing. I mean, frankly, we shouldn't be surprised when our kids are using something that's been marketed to them, and instead of punishing them, at least initially, what we should be doing is trying to help them. ABC 13 data requests show more than 1,300 students from three of our area's largest school districts were sent to alternative schools this year for e-cigarette violations. In HISD, 244 students. In Katy, 399. In CyFair ISD, 638. Representative Thompson says the impact of the law is being felt in Brazoria County in a reduced number of cases being referred to juvenile justice. The worst thing in the world is for a kid to make a mistake and, and have a record. But placement in an alternative school setting can lead to more severe outcomes. A 2020 IDRA study showed students removed from school for non-criminal offenses in Texas were 23% more likely to have future contact with the justice system. UT Austin research from 2021 found ninth graders sent to DAEP even once were 33% less likely to graduate than their peers. And experts we talk to don't feel punishment is an effective deterrent to nicotine use. This particular approach is maybe a little heavy handed, especially since I'm not hearing too much about what to do if you're addicted. The bill does allow for but doesn't require substance abuse education. They're not going to get the kind of instruction in, a, in an alternative placement that they're getting at their home school. It removes them from a community of people who know them and who love them. There's no legislation, Jonathan, that's going to be I use the word perfect. Um, you know, we're, we're going to end up in situations where there's going to be, um, I, I'll use the word unintended consequences of pe any piece of legislation. The bill did pass the House with a 145 to 2 vote, but Thompson told me they should look at revising the law. In our reporting this year, though, we learned districts of innovation found other ways to address the issue. HISD voted to reclassify the violation. Fort Bend ISD created a substance abuse program for first time offenders. And Cypher ISD tells me some students weren't sent to DAEPs after a disciplinary review process. 